Hello, gentle viewers. This is of Indian, and welcome to Out of the Park Baseball 21. The game just released today. Um, no one caught me, so shame on you for not being eagle-eared enough. I know eagles aren't well known for ears, but hey, that's fine. Um, I did the math wrong. It actually was 8 a.m. this morning, not 8 p.m. this evening. So uh, that's why you're watching it now. So uh, I already went ahead and created uh, my series. Uh, you can see here, Orioles YT series. But I want to talk a little bit about our goals for this series um, before I dive in and play. I just want to give you guys a chance to see the simple, clean loading, loading screen, which I really, really enjoy. Um, we're going to be playing as the Baltimore Orioles starting from what would have been opening day this year, which has unfortunately been delayed for everyone, which is kind of sad, but you know, it is what it is. And we still at least have OOTP 21 to carry us through, uh, these current times we're in, uh, we're already playing as Baltimore. And I wanted to set kind of a couple of ground rules for when I will consider this series to be complete. Um, we are not doing what I did for OOTP 20, which was the world tour. We're going to start taking teams and focusing in on them, like really digging in and playing them for several seasons. For the Orioles, my goal, and it may not be possible, but we're going to try, is to have one player in the Hall of Fame that we developed. So anyone I draft from 2020 onward or anyone I acquire in 2020 onward. Or, and three titles. That's what I want. That's what I expect. Until I get all of those things, I will keep playing. So you guys can see a chance of how the team develops. I'm also going to be a bit slower. First to introduce you to the changes to OTP21. And just take a little bit more time. I did occasionally feel kind of rushed with OTP20. I made choices I would not have made had I taken the time to think about them in a little bit more detail. So I'm overall, the, the pace will be a little bit slower. But the sim time should actually be shorter because I know they've done some improvements to game operation. So let's go ahead, click continue, and start loading things up. And here we go, Doc of Indian. Uh, right away, two things should be really apparent to you if you've never seen a video of OTP21. First of all, is this great big giant button here. Uh, this automatically advances the sim until you reach certain criteria. And you can set these criteria under Manage Your Options by selecting the Configure Continue button. Um... And so what this will do is it will play the game until one of these things happens or until this expires. You can set it for one day, one month, next league event. One day, one week, two weeks, one month, next league event. Same thing. Um, I'm actually going to choose hide continue button. I think... I want to keep playing the game the way I used to play it, but maybe I'll change my mind later on. We'll enable it. But for right now, continue button is gone, but we get more information here, which is always lovely. Um, the other big change that should have been noticeable from this very screen is that every screen is not customizable. So I changed all these around from the defaults. I could have, for example, set this to show my inbox. But you know what? My inbox is also right there. So I'd rather it tell me my owner goals. Uh, Peter Angelos and his infinite wisdom has given me two goals. We need to not suck completely this season. I make no promises. And keep building the team up in order to reach the playoffs. Sounds easy enough. So it's been a while since we've played a standard MLB season. It can be easy to forget that we actually play the draft in midseason. Notice we now have the All-Star Home Run Challenge, the All-Star Prospects game. These are games that we can actually play and watch or even participate in the Home Run Challenge, if that's what we want to do. Um, we have International Free Agents back again, and overall this is what we're looking at here. 
The other thing I want to focus on before we start making decisions are some of the changes to the rules. These are MLB changes, and we're going to be using the authentic MLB uh, deals here. All this is pretty much the same. Nothing too surprising here. I did set face gen for major league players, so let's go start to see those. Uh, please notice I'm using increments of five to be a bit more scouty. So if you're wondering why does everyone look like they're a 50 or 55, that's probably why. Uh, AI settings, I leave these as is. If you've played a lot of OOTP 20 or any of the previous games want to make your game a little bit more challenging, uh, you can adjust these. So this is how the AI will actually evaluate players. Right now, they base most of it on weight and a little bit on stats. Um, if you go by 100% stats, it can result in some fairly interesting scenarios. So we're going to skip that for now. We're not going to look at these next three buttons because we don't care. League settings. League and teams. All this is the same. Rules. Rule number one, minimum batters faced, three. This is a new rule that... Uh, Major League Baseball released this year that uh, uh, a pitcher has to face three batters uh, in order to, before he can be replaced by something else, with a few exceptions like injuries and things like that. Uh, OTP does let you remove this rule entirely if you don't like it, or you can pick one, two, three, or four. Um, I'm going to uncheck that, please. Second, uh, we have a 26-man roster, which is really, really good, and I'm glad that we have that. Uh, one thing it is currently not doing isn't enforcing the uh, two-way rules, which exist in real Major League Baseball, or the... Um, shit. Or the, uh, or the, the maximum roster, i.e. you need 13, no more than 13 pitchers. So, I wonder if they will update that later on, but for right now, they're not. Uh, notice the expanded roster after September 1st is going to be 28 players, not 40. That's another change with a 26-man active roster. Um, uh, the injured list for pitchers is now 15 days. It's no longer a minimum of 10. All these other rules are pretty much the same as they've always been, so I'm not really going to look at those too terribly much. Financials, these are all the same as they've always been. Um, they did add the ability to include multiple different compensations, which is pretty exciting. Um, all this is fine. Uh, as usual, I renamed the Silver Slugger and Gold Glove Awards because OTP doesn't actually have a... Um, oh, it's not actually listing that there. I don't know if I have to fix that or not. I probably should. Let's say 2021. Um, ah, don't do that. Uh, because OTP doesn't have an agreement with uh, Louisville Slugger or Rawlings, they can't use the official names. But you know what? We can, so we will. Um, notice the other options for the All-Star game, which is pretty cool. Um, I, and I think they also updated the playoffs. Maybe they didn't. Because I thought they were going to go for... Maybe thinking of the NFL that added more playoff teams. Yeah, I think it is actually the NFL I'm thinking of. Um, so those are the, those are the rules we're playing with. Everything else has left as is. Automatic use of the hard international cap. Stats and AI. Oh, excuse me. I want all the detail, obviously. And, uh, yeah. Good stuff. So, let's take a quick look. Here are my goals. I took over. Doc of Indian. Yada, yada, yada. Let's get down to the good stuff. 
Uh, one of the biggest changes to the game is that the draft is now properly seen as an all-year phenomenon. Notice I can already see the draft pool right now. But wait, there's more. I have the next four years of draft pools. If I want to find out the best player in the 2023 draft, we only know of two people that are likely to declare... This will update over the season. Um, if we look at Drew Burris, for example, we don't have any information on him. We just assume that he's going to be entering high school here. But if we look at, say, uh, one of the things you'll notice for new draftees, they're not for the people already in the game, but for the new ones, um, is that uh, you'll get stats now. And you'll actually get to track the through their baseball journey which is really exciting and i really really love that um so we can look up the next four years and these will change over time um presumably you'll get notifications about certain players if they drop out or if they decide that they want to declare for the draft or whatever so that's new the other thing that's instantly new thanks to the screen is scouting accuracy so right now our scouting accuracy is pretty low, which means we have no real way of telling if this guy's any good or not. Um, the more you scout, the better results you get. And this creates an incentive to actually manually scout individual players because the more money overall and the more money you put in certain areas means you get more frequent, better draft, uh, better scouting reports. Uh, so we're going to, our first major search is going to involve scouting. Um, this is actually perfect. And then we can set our scouting priorities for things that we know that we want. We want to make sure that our scout automatically gets these people first. Let's add a new one. So we're the Orioles. We need everything. So I'm going to say all positions. Uh, 16 to 20. I don't care about the nation. I don't care about any of this. Uh, we do want uh, minor leaguers. Superstar quality based on potential ability. And then we'll just leave the rest of these as is. So basically what he's going to do is he's going to scout minor leaguers more aggressively if they think they might be superstars in potential. Uh, we're going to increase our scouting budget. Oh, this is the most that my jerk of an owner will let me spend on scouting. Thanks, jerk. Um... I'm going to ever so slowly reduce international scouting because I want more attention paid to amateur scouting. So what this will mean is that as the season progresses, I'm going to get the most reports about amateurs and then international players and then minor leaguers and finally the major leaguers. Uh, if we look at my salary, I have no money to spend on players, which is fine. I mean, it's not fine, but I'm going to have to deal with it because my owner is a dick. Thanks, Peter Angelos. Right now, he's ecstatic, though, so I guess I can't be too mean. Again, notice you can change things around here. I've already done so, um, which is pretty exciting. Okay. So the other thing we're going to want to do is we're going to basically guide our scout in a certain direction. We know already that we have the number two overall pick. And we also know that we're the Orioles. So if we look at my team home screen, uh, here are my top prospects that the, that the game believes they are. We have the number three prospect in Adley Rutschman, number 51 in Ryan Mountcastle, number 64 in Grayson Rodriguez. Notice for these, you can decide how big you want each one of these to be. Uh, like if, let's say, the standings, let's say I want my team prospects to be just a little bit bigger. I could do one by three, and all of a sudden they're bigger and everything else gets scooted around. 
to accommodate that. And we're just going to pick reset. This is what it normally looks like when you start the game. Uh, I find most of these to be useless. Like, I don't care about my team schedule. I just don't. Give me them, uh, actually, yeah, give me them top prospects. Um, team rankings is fine. Injuries is fine. Everything else here is fine. I just don't like that one. And then the division graph is kind of cool, but I've also got the standings. I'm going to replace the standings. Let's find out who's hot and who's not. So, um, if we look at a stat screen, I know we haven't literally done anything yet, but I just want to show you guys all this stuff first. Let's look at Chris Davis. Um, Chris Davis, he hits for power and draws walks and is otherwise useless. His scouting accuracy is average. Uh, OSA thinks he's a touch worse than we do, but it's not clear why. Oh, really? Is it just we think he's a better bunter and a little bit better at base running? There you go. That gets him enough to a 25 in our eyes, apparently. Um, the important point is he's not a very good baseball player. And he hasn't been for a while. And yet, in our infinite wisdom, we gave him a gigantic freaking contract. I just, we're going to try to get rid of him if we can. I don't think we can, but we're going to try. We have any kind of option in his contract? Nope, I got to suck it up. God damn it. But uh, if you notice, you can now change. You can add a filter. You can add and remove columns. You can move your columns around. Uh, it's even drag and drop. So, like here, if I want to put doubles here, then by God, I'm going to put doubles there. If I don't care about grounding into double plays, and I don't, uh, no thank you. I could remove them. Um, why does this not look correct? Because I definitely have more stats here earlier. Oh, I know what I have to do. I have to drag, I have to move you to local. And then delete the existing ones. And fielding stats. Okie dokie. And here are the stats as I set them up. So this is what I most wanted to know. I didn't care about uniform numbers, and you probably don't either. But you can shift any of these from local to global. The difference is global applies to all of your games. Local is just the game you're playing at that time. So if I created a new franchise, like if I wanted to play the Indians 2 on my own time while I'm not doing a YouTube series, I could do that if I wanted to. And have different things there. So... If we look at batting potential, yuck. It's not good. Uh, Chan Sisko is our best player, like our best young player by far. And he does look admittedly pretty damn good. Um, we can see here he's only played in the majors for cups of coffee here and there. He's going to get a chance to earn his salary this year. And show that he was worth us drafting him. Um, we saw Jose Iglesias, who's actually kind of good. He's a little overpaid, but not as bad as you think he might be. And then we have other players of varying qualities. So the truth of the matter is, they're not very good. And we look at the rosters. Let's sort by potential all across the board. And let's see who we think might have a future on the team. Okay, right away, everyone who's at least a 45 is getting shortlisted. I want constant reports on those players. Mm. 
clicking all the people. Uh, one of the things I'm going to do that I didn't do with OTP um, 20, the reason I'm doing this is I'm going to take personal control of only select prospects. I want the game to be putting people through their paces otherwise. Um, so even though I want content scouting reports on all these people, unless they're 50 or above, I'm not going to take control of their development. <clears throat> so I'm going to take all of you guys and I'm going to set you to disable. So I did this quite a lot for OOTP in the past. I'm just doing it again now to uh, then go into manager's office, manager options, and I'm going to let my assistant GM promote and demote people as he likes, apart from the ones that I have reserved control of for myself. Okay. So if we look at the team... We don't have much in the way of prospects. We check the prospect pipeline. This is new to you, by the way. Uh, this lists the top 100 prospects in Major League Baseball. And guess what? It constantly updates. And this tells us right about when we think the player will be ready. Like, we think Adley Rushman is probably going to be ready next year. Uh, we can then blow him up and see, you know, how he looks right now, like his potential, his batting ratings, and some other interesting things here. OSA thinks more highly of him than we do. OSA thinks he could be a seven, thinks he could be a 70 uh, potential. But these don't go, we think he's only a 50. So this tells me this is a guy we probably want to make sure that we scout. So I'm going to go ahead and ask my scout, Give me a look at this guy. Why do we think he's so much worse? Um, let's immediately go to the rookie draft pool and let's try to identify another five or six players we'd like to get some scouting reports on. We've got the number two overall pick, so we want to make sure we do our due diligence. Um, I'm going to request scouting reports on the top five players in the draft. We don't have any player that's so amazing that I would say, I can't possibly draft this guy. I got to let someone else get the job. And we're going to say, scout, give us some scouting reports on these guys. Now, over time, he's going to also pick and choose players that he wants to scout, and that's fine. We don't really particularly care. Um, should we go ahead and ask for all the 60s too? No, let's wait. I don't... The more you task your scouting director with individual reports, the less he does his broader pools. So we're going to go ahead and just leave that as is. Do we want to do anything with the current major league roster? There are lots of things I want to do with it. But what can we do about it is the question. I'm going to try a shot in the dark. Can I get rid of Chris Davis? Is there anyone who would give me absolutely anything for him? It's probably going to be nobody, but you never know. And look, no one wants him. And that's completely understandable. I wouldn't want him either. If I eat 25% of his salary, does that change? It does not. And I'm just going to stop right there because I think we're just going to have to suck it up. If we look at our salaries, he's a giant chunk of it by a lot. And we have to accept it. Uh, Trey Mancini. Oh, shit. He's got a freaking tumor? Damn. Trey Mancini actually looks to be a pretty fair player. So we might want to give him some attention in the extensions department. Although, thanks, Peter, you've decided I don't get any money for extensions. Oof. But we will quickly check. Oh, he's already on the DL, so that's fine. Um, like, a Brian Holiday is a pretty good defender. We think he's probably never going to be a great hitter, but that's at least a pretty solid... Um, minor league catcher. 
The problem is that Severino is as good as he is. So he might be a good trade target. Somebody we might want to move on from at some stage. Um, it should also tell us... Tell us now what school he went to. There should be something that says how we acquired him. I remember that being in there. Maybe it wasn't. Oh yeah, if a player is acting like I could actually go on Twitter and I could tweet him and be like, hey, we're looking at your player player profile. You're not terrible, bro. Um that's alright. Um, so yeah. All of these, by the way, now are also editable. Aren't they? Wait, what? I wonder if that's something they didn't have a chance to put in the game because it was definitely in there, but you could edit these screens too. Oh, you know what? I remember what it was. It reflects this. So if I pick edit and I pick like expanded batting sets and I change something around in here. Yeah, that's what it was. It'll automatically reflect it here. So just really quickly here, if I go over to expanded batting stats and I select it and I go back to the profile page, it should include the expanded batting sets. But it appears not to be doing that. I wonder if that's just something that they have yet to fully implement into the game. Uh, right now, I don't really care. Um, I know how to find out what I need to know about somebody a bit more easily than that. So, um, let's very quickly, on the highest of levels, see what we've got to work with for the future. Pitching. We've got a few pretty good relievers. Uh, Tanner Scott's the only one who's, like, truly exceptional, and even he had a kind of a bad year last year. Um... And then we've got some okay to mediocre pitchers for the rest of it. The truth is, my dudes, we suck at everything, so it's not like any changes are going to change anything. Uh, lineups were in a little bit better shape on Cisco in particular. Seems like he could be a keeper. Uh, he is only making the minimum right now, which is pretty exciting. But, uh, yeah... Are there any changes you want to make right now on opening day? Ryan Mountcastle. We want you to get some experience. I'm more than happy to let you play for a bit. Ryland Bannon. You know, we really need you to pick up your ability to hit for average. You just made AAA. That's fine. We do have 10 open spots on the 40 man. We may want to consider adding or taking a few people off of it. Um, but the Rule 5 draft isn't until after the season, so we don't have to make any of these decisions right this second. Oh. Hmm. The point is the cupboard's pretty bare, and I'm not going to turn down any prospect whatsoever, regardless of who we end up with. Uh, let us go ahead. We're actually and still in the preseason. Oh, I could demote people. That's actually really good. Um, Tommy Malone is on a bare minimum contract. He's never been particularly exciting. At least not in a very long time. So I don't feel a huge amount of pressure to, uh, to play him or trade him. I think we'll wait and see what happens. Um... Uh huh. Anybody else here that's like objectively terrible and could be profitably replaced by someone who's a bit more experienced? Not really. 
It looks like pitching in general is weak in the upper minors. It's a bit stronger when we get down into uh, into the lower minors. But, um, yeah. Oh, to anticipate, I always get this question, how do I get this many boxes on my screen? Uh, this is just because I happen to have a fairly big monitor. Uh, yours may differ. Oh, we even get the inter... Oh, this is our international complex. Got it. And we'll just wait on these and see what kind of uh, reports we get on them. Any any changes you're going to make? I'm just going to go ahead and stick with the default lineups and the default pitching staff. Uh, even though I set myself up as a manager, let me be honest here. I I don't care about uh, about any of this. What is this FO stuff? Oh, that's so weird. Oh, he's also a follower. Got it. Oh, what this means is that if we use an opener, uh, he is the one that we have designated in advance to, to fill that particular spot. That's interesting. Can I not? Yeah, I'm just going to hit no. I'm not going to bother with openers or followers. I'm just going to let him pitch as a starter. That's fine. Um, you'll notice we have Miguel Castro here set up to be an opener. We've got some other options here, but for right now, I'm not terribly concerned about it. Because it's not likely to matter. Um, there is no way that I can foresee us making the playoffs this year. I, ju I just don't think it's going to happen. Sorry. If you're expecting me to win the World Series this first year, I'm afraid you're going to be disappointed up in advance. I would honestly settle for getting rid of Chris Davis somehow. That would be... Just out of curiosity. Yeah, it's not worth it. Oh, well. Let's sum up to opening day. Um, we've all, we, Mike Elias, my assistant GM, has promoted some people from the international thing. That's fine. Top 100 prospects. There we go. And there's that. Uh, I want to pick my, my league and, or sorry, my entire organization. League news is nice, <clears throat> but it also really just, really clogs up the email so uh one of the things i'm going to do over the course of season maybe not with this episode in particular but definitely with the next one i'm going to stop at the end of each month and quickly review players and just let's see how players are doing before we make any decisions but uh the first month of the season is generally meaningless um it really just doesn't matter so the draft pool announcement here is what is the players that it will officially declare for the draft. Um, so it's going to be probably smaller than the existing pool because someone might decide to go to college or something. Oh man, you guys, we're first in the AL East. I think we are going to make the World Series this year. I'm just kidding. Nobody believes that. Let's uh, keep going, right? Okay, we're getting some early scouting reports. Let's look at Martin now. Now notice, remember, he was low before. We're now up to average on him. And my word, he looks like a stud. He's going to hit for contact, really good play discipline, won't strike out much, and play pretty good shortstop. Uh, where we differ from OSA, OSA thinks he's going to hit for a little more average, he's going to have a little more gap power. 
Um, I'm immediately going to ask my scouting report to scout him again. Uh, Mick Abel. Again, average. And this is a true average, as in this isn't average for my scout. This is average based on his objective abilities. Um, he's got a lot of different pitches, which is good for good four-pitch mix. Uh, two of those are going to be plus-plus because they're in the 70s. Pretty good stuff in movement. Control is okay. He looks like a stud. Stamina is not perfect. Jordan Walker. Walker's got power for days, and it's just going to be a question of is he going to hit enough for contact to uh, to make it. I also don't know that he'll stick at third, but he might. I'm going to go ahead and ask you to scout him again. And we're going to do the same thing for Abel. Just go ahead and tell you scout him again. And then if I look at my scouts uh, list, I can move people around. Uh, where is his scout thing? Where is your stupid task list? Here it is. Yeah, and so this will tell us about how long it's going to take him to scout someone. And then uh, what we expect. So right now his top priority is going to be Adley Rushman, which is what I want. Uh, right. And you'll notice he's already done some scouting on his own too. Like Anthony Domino, a free agent, he's already got high accuracy on. He sucks, but we have the information. And he's just going to keep doing this uh, over time. Uh, we learn more about Jordan Luplo from Cleveland. Um, because he's going to kind of pick his own thing, right? I think there is a very high task, too, but I'm not positive about that. If we look at all players, it's going to get even a bit bigger. Uh, Zach Gallon from Arizona is uh, pretty good, as it turns out. And uh, there's no earthly way they would ever let us have him. And I'm not even going to ask to trade for him. Because I already know the answer is going to be no. Notice we're still actually paying less than the league baseline. This is because our owner is a dick. I know I've said that a few times. But anyone who's actually a Baltimore fan knows that what I'm saying is true. Um, I'm going to re-sign... Ah, you don't want to be a manager for us anymore. You know, let's go ahead and just make our lives a bit easier. Anyone who wants to resign can resign. You're a weirdo. Just a minute a bit girl that you come back. He's like, no, I don't want to come back. What a weirdo. We have a really good team trainer and a kind of okay scouting director. Um, we're going to definitely keep an eye on our bench coach and our pitching coach because both of them are uh, their contracts are up at the end of this year you're good with power pitchers so you're really good with michael givens tanner scott and miguel castro all of whom are relievers great that's exactly what i want he also to be a relief pitcher for the tigers for a long time but, uh, yeah, let us advance to May. A personal message. Here we go. Emerson Hancock. An amazing curveball. Pretty good fastball. Pretty good changeup. He's a college junior, which means he won't necessarily declare, right? He might decide he wants to graduate. So we're not going to push any farther on Emerson here. I like his stuff. He looks like he could be a really, really good pitcher. But I think it's going to take him some time. Asa Lacey. 
Uh, Aces got really good control. He's not the hardcore power pitcher that the others are. He's also a college junior. Uh, so I'm going to instantly add Austin Martin to a new short list. Draft guys. I want all the news on Austin Martin as the season progresses. Uh, he is a college junior, so again, he might not declare. Uh, Mick Abel is a high school senior. Uh, let me add him to my list. Definitely Jordan Walker. And then I'm going to go ahead and wait carefully on Hancock and Lacey. I'm going to go back to the draft pool. And we're going to, we're going to look at all the 60s. I'm going to drop Keyshawn Frett. I think our current catcher is actually pretty good. I just added some more. These will be the last ones. I just want to make sure that we look at all the top-notch prospects. I want to make sure that we have our scout looking at those. Okay, man, check out Jordan Walker again. Now it's high. So we checked the scouting history for him. Uh, he just did one. It was average, and I did second one, and it's high. A little bit better opinion of his contact ability. Uh, you're telling me you could be a second division starter at third base, which basically means his third base isn't super great, which is fair. Um, so I think he'll be a slightly better contact hitter, but we're still not totally sold on him as a player. And now if you look at OSA, OSA scouting accuracy is low, right? We know more than OSA does. And what we're seeing is he's a little better than OSA thinks he is. Unless our guy is wrong. This still isn't a guarantee. Of course. Adley Rutschman. We have very high scouting accuracy now. So here's an interesting decision that we could make. We have information that OSA doesn't about him. We think he's severely overrated. We think he'll be solid and still a player we'd like to have. But we could trade him for a prospect that would really be of use to us. Interesting. I'm going to create another new short list. I'm going to call him um, Prospects to Trade? Question mark. Right now, we think he's overrated. Our scout's like, he's okay, but he's not exceptional. OSA thinks he's a borderline all-star. So we're going to very carefully watch his development. And let's immediately notice, by the way, that he's had barely any time in the pro leagues. He only got drafted last year. Uh, what pick were you, my friend? First overall. Mm, probably shouldn't have picked him, but there's nothing we can do about that. Uh, Luke Little, Juco guy, really good fastball. The rest of it is meh. We can wait a bit on him, I think, before we try to push him too much farther. And we got some more. My, my dude, Tanner Witt. High school senior, good overall hitter. Not amazing, but, you know, 
I'll add him to my potential list. Blaze Jordan. Got a really great name, and oh my word, does he have power, and that's all he's got. He's basically a younger, cheaper version of Chris Davis. With actual plate discipline, admittedly. Uh, give me another report on him, if you would, before I decide if I want to add him to my draft guys list. Ed Howard is a shortstop. He kind of sucks at it. But he's an okay hitter. I see he played in Major League Baseball in 2014. That's got to be a bug. Because I don't think Ed Howard played Major League Baseball when he was 12 years old. I feel pretty confident I would have heard about that. Pretty confident. Um, you're not terrible. I could add you to my draft guys list. Robert Hassel the third. Again, not terrible. Nick Gonzalez. Okay, defender. Good hitter for contact. And enough power. I like him quite a lot, actually. I'm going to go ahead and add you to my draft guys list, but I'm also going to try to get another scouting report on him. And that seems good for now. I'm going to really scout heavily my possible first round picks. Um, Mick Abel, you give me more. High accuracy. Do we learn anything new? Not really. Uh, you basically gave me the same stuff. Which is fine. Oh, sorry. You, something did change here. I missed it. Uh, we think his stamina is actually a little bit better. Okay. Eh, you're in the draft guys list now. Oh, you're already there. Perfect. Ty Floyd... He's okay. He's not necessarily exceptional. For the second overall pick, I wouldn't touch him. I'll put him on my draft guys list in case he ends up in the second round, but he probably won't be. High scouting accuracy on Blaze Jordan. We actually, actually, our, our opinion of him dropped. We think his eye isn't quite as good. We'll put him in the list, I guess. All right. I'm not going to run any more scouting, manual scouting reports after this group is done. Austin Martin... Really good defensive shortstop. Could also play third. Excellent set of tools. I really like him. You're on my list, dude. Oh, we could bring DJ Stewart and Trey Mancini back. Um... Our issue, our issue is we don't exactly have a spot for Trey Mancini. He is real, real good, though. And we could always just make him a DH. Um, damn, bro, you're killing it. So are you. Um... Okay, Trey Mancini's value to us is more long-term than short-term. 
How is Renato hitting so far this year? Not great. But he's also he's also out of options. Which means my only option is to trade him if I don't want to keep him. I'd really rather get rid of Chris Davis, but I don't think I can. Hey, dude's slugging like a mofo, but uh, yeah. Still not very good. Um, I'm going to go ahead and tell Trey Mancini, how about a rehab assignment? Uh, DJ Stewart is significantly better than Anthony Santander. Um, but Santander is hitting fairly well so far. So let's go ahead and tell DJ he can rehab too. Sean, come on, bro. Here's Nick Gonzalez again. Focus on the changes. We think he's got a little bit more overall potential. We bumped him up to a 55. Although nothing else changed. That's enough to have him on the list. Sorry guys, if you can hear that in the background, there's some pots and pans stuff. Oh no. Can I convince you to suspend him permanently? Be really cool if you did. We can get Evan Phillips back, but he sucks. Um, he's real bad. But our scouting accuracy is low, to be fair. So you know what? Maybe he's got a bit better talent than we're giving him credit for. I'm still going to have you rehab, though. Because I just I'm not going to call you up unless there's actual value in you. Alex Cobb is suspended for eight games. Okay, let's continue. Ooh, I got a home run streak. Nice. Ruiz did it. Good on him. Um, okay. Raul Santa Ana. I don't know why we have him. He is a pretty big dude. Maybe he'll he'll gain a bit. I guess that's fair. Uh Bruce Zimmerman is got starter of the month that's fun draft pool announcement and you're only going to miss about six days so that's fine there's going to be a, a mock draft on the day of the draft we can look over the draft pool did anyone drop so it's just like just as we've let time progress, we've got some pretty good knowledge on everyone else. Uh, oh, one of my big targets is gone. They didn't declare. Uh, let's check my short list. Draft guys, where is he? No, it was Austin Martin. Yeah, he was always the guy I wanted. And he is available, potentially. So, uh, we know that we're going to have the second overall pick, which means we can get a top quality player. Here's some statistics. Uh, oh my word, he's obliterating baseballs. 
The power appears to be real. Let's narrow it down to three and let's get ourselves some very high accuracy on them. Uh, Scout Walker for me, if you would be so kind. Martin. Okay, he's playing for a really good college, so a 300 average is actually a pretty good sign. And then, do we like Asa Lacey, or did we like... Okay, he's pitching at a great college, and he's doing really, really well. He's going to be expensive, but... I kind of like Hancock a bit better. Uh, who else is on my draft guys list? You know, it's already a very high on some of my players, which is really good. Um, I think that's good enough, actually. I don't think there's anyone else here that I would consider. I really like the look of Jordan Walker's insane power. If I had enough confidence that he'd actually carry that through. To the majors, which I don't. Um, Mick Abel. Yeah, you know what? Let's go ahead and give you one more scouting report. Let's try to get very high on everybody, right? And what we might do this episode, guys, because I did spend so much time talking things over, um, I might actually end the episode after the draft. And then we'll, we'll pick it up again next week. Okay, very high. Um, we rate him better than OSA because we think he's got more raw power. And honestly, his college stat or his high school stats seem to show that. You can never trust high school batting averages because everybody hits for like 500 in high school. That's draft eligible. But, um... He's got some... Uh, okay, DJ Stewart, your time ran out, which also meant that Trey Mancini's time runs out. Where the crap did you put DJ Stewart? Injured list. Here we go. There we go. Um. Mm. Uh, what if I eat twenty five percent? Is that going to give me any offers whatsoever? Nope. Okay. Well, we tried. Um, here's my concern. Renato Nunez seems like a useful dude. He's not nearly as good as Trey Mancini, though. Just, it's not even close, it seems. So, I either trade Nunez... Or I wave him and hope that no one takes him. And I don't think that's very likely. I think that's a losing bet. That no one's going to take him from me if I do flip it. If I do wave him. So I'm going to shop you around. But I'm going to be, be, be a bit more particular. I'm going to get only prospects. I don't even care about regulars right now. And let's see what we're offered. Okay, hey, we're getting some names, which is great. We're mostly getting offered relievers, which is actually not terrible. We do need some better relievers in the minors. Um... 
Okay, Gabriel Cancel. Seems pretty terrible. All right, Sam De La Plain. Very low accuracy, so this means we could be full of it. But even if OSA is right and we're not, this is still a pretty darn good reliever. What about Aaron Fletcher? We have a little bit more on him. Really good fastball, pretty good slider too. Change up is excellent. I'm going to go ahead and trade for Aaron Fletcher. And can I squeeze more prospects out of you? I probably can't, but you never know. I like the idea of Nolan Hoffman, actually. Look, he's going to be a project-type pitcher, which just increases the chance that they'll trade him. You know, he's injured, but I can't trade for him. Uh, search five potential, please. Look, obviously, I'm not going to ask about, like, Jared Kalenic. You're just going to laugh in my face. And that's totally fair. Um, what about Justin Dunn? Ah. That's not great. I'd love to get me some Kyle Lewis. Is there any way you'd even consider the offer? Not quite enough. Lewis is a real good left fielder. And if anything, we're underestimating his capabilities. Could I interest you? In Chris Davis. I know. I'm wasting my time. I'm not even going to check it. I was kidding. Um, like, I would throw in, like, a 30-level prospect that's an outfielder. What about, like, Jordan Cannon? It's real close. If I drop him, is Alex Wells still on there? He is. Oh, uh, Wells is a junk baller. We're pretty sure we know what we've got with him. He might develop two mediocre pitches. I think this is fine. You can have him. Uh, this gives us a really good reliever and a pretty darn good outfielder, and we're not giving up anything substantial. Traded. Now that you should be DFA, right? Yep, you both go to the minors. And with him out of the way, we activate Trey Mancini. Uh, injured list. Activated. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and let my bench coach handle this for now. That seems good. Fine. Uh, what do we do about DJ Stewart? Like, if DJ Stewart can play um, left field, I'm just going to promote him. Yeah, I mean, Dwight Smith Jr. is actually not that great. Demotion for you, promotion for you. I'm going to move you to left because you are marginally better as a left fielder. And then I will go ahead and let my bench coach set everything up. Oh, they automatically go to rookie ball, don't they? Yeah, here we go. Uh, Fletcher, you are pitching in double A. I see no reason not to send you back to double A. Let me go ahead and lock you down as a really temp as a really talented player. Uh, Lewis, you were in the PCL. Let's send you back to AAA. 
And again, I'm going to lock you down. Um, I'm just going to ignore you guys for now. I don't know what I could do to make that a little bit more palatable. Um, no, because I do want certain personal messages. I just don't care about scouting reports. Isn't there a way that you can specify what kind of personal message there is? Maybe not. That's fine. Uh, one week isn't enough for me to put him on the DL. Remember, that's for 15 days. That's at least two starts. That's fine. God damn it, DJ Stewart. You literally just came back. The good news is we're real, real bad. All right. Alex Cobb doesn't want to play for us anymore. Which is, you know, understandable. Alex Cobb is actually not terrible at baseball. He's also incredibly expensive. This is the exact kind of player we don't even want. Here's going to be our issue. I bet no one else is going to want him either. But we're going to try. No one wants you. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put him on the block and see if that gets us anybody. Later on down the road. We probably won't, but that's fine. Everything's fine. Uh, Evan Phillips. Where are you, my dude? It's a pretty bad sign when they won't even let you rehab in AAA. Is he hurt again? No, he's just real tired. Um, Yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and send you to... Uh, I'm going to designate you for assignment. Oh, I'd have to waive you. Oh, no. We, we know what kind of pitcher you are, and that kind is not very good. I'm going to waive you and give you a DFA. Like, I'm, I'm not going to bother. Yes, I'm sure you do demand a trade to a contending team. The problem is you suck, mate. Nobody wants you. I wish, I hope that part of trade AI eventually gets fixed. Uh, very nice. Washington Nationals. You'll give me Howie Kendrick. For a mediocre reliever, but a starting pitcher with a lot of promise. I like Howie Kendrick quite a lot. This is not a good deal. I'm going to reject the trade out of hand. Um... All you do is hit for power. That's your entire game. I don't need more Chris Davises. No. Oh, look. He's surprisingly cleared waivers. Enjoy double A, jerk. That wasn't nice. I shouldn't call him a jerk just because he's bad. Ooh, another achievement unlocked. Nice. Rookie of the month. Who on our team is even a rookie? Uh, okay, Hunter Harvey Taurus. His bicep. That's an easy decision. 60-day DL for you. Player development. Um... Kyle Lewis got a lot better. That's fun. Michael Bauman. Okay. 
Good for you, bro. Um, let's go ahead and add Danny Barnes and let him, he can pitch for a bit, I guess. Look, it's not going to matter, guys. It's just not going to matter. Um, we're not going to win very many games with or without his help, so. Okay. So let's look at the first year player draft. And let's just start the draft. Okay. Um. Oh, wow. Giant button there. That's interesting. Button select. Oh, okay. Oh, you can actually click the button over there and draft. That's kind of cool. Um, so, let's sort by player quality. We didn't get very high on anybody, which is a shame. But that's fine. All right, let's do the obvious and let Detroit draft. Detroit took Austin Mark, which I was kind of afraid they might do. Okay. There's a couple things we need to consider. Um, we don't have a very big draft pool. So we can't afford Mick Abel. Just, we can't do it. I don't have the money. Which also means I can't afford Jordan Walker. Now, this is their demand. If they're easy to negotiate with, maybe we can get them to come down a bit. But um, this is not good. I really wanted Martin. And I guess, you know, worst case scenario, we draft someone and then we don't sign them. And we get the second, we get the third overall pick next year. Nick Gonzalez is pretty okay. Mick Abel's the best pitcher in the draft. I feel pretty confident saying that. But we can't afford him. We could grab Emerson Hancock. He's a really good pitcher. He is a bit older. Good pitcher, big frame. Good college stats. He kept the ball in the park, sort of. It was a bit of a weakness of him. Uh, power pitcher. Good stamina. I think we go ahead and we take Hancock. He's not the player I want. The player I want is actually probably going to be able. Hancock is awfully good, too. Uh, Lacey. Let's go for Hancock. And I'm going to offer him the slot. Actually, I'm just going to draft him because he might actually want less than the slot. And never tell you they want less than the slot, only if they want more than the slot. Let's auto-pick until our next draft pick. Okay. Um, Ty Floyd. Now, Floyd's a bit less polished, but he's still got lots and lots of potential. Could be a really good strike thrower. Two really good pitches. I like that his best pitch is a curveball. There's just something about that that just feels right to me. Ooh, or we could get Tanner Witt, because I didn't get the third baseman I wanted. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. I 
do want a good third base prospect. And even if like his profile is middling, he did pretty darn well. I'm going to give him a draft. Although we do need pitchers too, don't we? Fuck. Take Floyd. I got to do it. I've got to... We've got to build somewhere. Ty Floyd seems like a pretty good choice. And look, he fell to my second second round pick. So I'm instantly going to grab Tanner Witt. And I think that was a good call there. Third round, no one, Blaze Jordan doesn't want to play Major League Baseball. That's fine. I don't really mind all that much. Harold Cole. Good discipline, very good second baseman. It's a third round pick, right? Let's take him. Draft player. Auto draft until next pick. Um. Do we have, I look by batting potential. Do we have any really good contact hitters left in the draft? We have a few. We have Casey Schmidt. Ooh. Can you play any position with any kind of competence? You can sort of play third. I wouldn't mind drafting you as a potential two-way player. Let's draft him. Just see how he turns out, right? Um, a lot of you guys can fall. So go and give me default. Because right now, we just need all the prospects we can get our hands on that are of unique abilities. Uh, Drew Romo keeps falling. I mean, I can see why. He's a purely defensive catcher who doesn't hit that well. Hey, he's just up the road for me. I don't think I'm going to draft him. I don't think he's worth it. Anderson plays good defense, but doesn't really hit. There's value in that. But I think I'll let him wait and see if I can grab him in the sixth round, but I won't have to pay him a bonus. Um... Keyshawn Frack can play everywhere. And I think he'll hit well enough that he'll stick somewhere. So I think we're going to go ahead and draft him. And then let's auto-draft until the next pick. Is my dude still here? No, he appears to have vanished. That's fine. Notice we're still getting reasonably decent players late in the draft. So much so, I will happily take Drew Romo if he's free. Oh, he wants $8 million. Uh, bro, you are delusional. How about we look at Hunter Barnhart? Like, he's not going to set the world on fire, but I think he's going to be potentially a good player. I'm not going to pick anyone that's got big demands. Bryce Bonin. Now we're getting to the point where I don't think he's very good. I'm going to look at some batters. Really good home run potential. Pretty good play discipline. 
wasn't a great high school to play at, but still did very, very well. I'm going to give him a chance. Gavin, I think you have some potential. Let's draft that player. Auto-draft until next pick. Um... Davinini. We could try him too. I think we'll go up to 10 rounds and then we'll just let the AI pick who they want. Uh, Highland Hall. Pretty decent power, not much else. Good outfielder. That's what I want. Welcome aboard. Um, yeah, we're at the stage in the draft now where no one's really going to stand out. Tell a lie. Hi, Daniel Harper. I really like your slider. Uh, let's give him a shot. Draft player. And then I'm going to go ahead and complete the rest of the draft. We're going to go through some negotiations, and then I think we'll probably finish this episode. Potentially. Um, okay. He wants the slot. I'll give it to him. You want the slot. I'll give it to you. Tanner, you want less money. I'm going to give you less money. You want less money. I'm going to give you less. I'm going to give you less. Um... Bro, I will offer you above slot, but you're just going to tell me no, and that's fine. All you guys actually still want a bonus. I don't approve. But I will pay it for the two guys that I offered. You seem pretty good, and you seem pretty good. Um, Jack O'Dowd. Um, I think what we'll do next episode is we'll quickly review these other players that were drafted and see if there's any others that we want to offer a bonus to. Can I just submit a zero dollar bonus? Eh. We'll worry about that next time. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed... I know this is a bit slower than the normal pace, which is exactly what we wanted. Um, some time to talk about the game, time to talk about the mechanics, and things of that nature. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed. It is a new series with a new game, so likes, comments, subscriptions are always appreciated. Until next time, this has been Avindian. Thank you for watching, and I bid you good day.